Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. Today we'll have our fifth lesson in a series of six videos on the topic of ratios and proportions. We'll do problem number 29 and problem number 30. The problem number 29, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? We are told that we have three people, three people, X, Y, and Z, worked on a project. They're working on a certain project. We are further told that they put in the hours, they put in the hours in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4. Furthermore, we are told one person worked 24 hours. One person worked 24 hours. Question simply is, based on these three uh, inform bits of information, question simply is, which of the following cannot, which of the following cannot, B cannot be the total number of hours worked by these three people. And here are the answer choices 54, 72, 90, and 108. There are only four answer choices. One more time 54, 72, 90, 108. What I want you to do right now is to pause the video as always, do the problem yourself, and once you have done so, resume the video and then we'll compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds' time. I'll give you five seconds to do just that. I'll give you Five seconds to do just that. I'm still in the room. I'm not going anywhere. All right. Let's see what we have. Well, the very first thing we understand is that they worked. We are told in the in the ratio of two to three to four. Let's see what they, what what that adds up to. Two to three to four. A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Two to three to four. That's the ratio that they worked in. Two plus three is five. Five plus four is nine. So the total is nine. Well, if we can find one number that is not a multiple of nine out of these four, then that must have been the number of hours that cannot have been the total number of hours. It says if one person worked 24 hours, which of the following cannot be the total number of hours? Let's look at 54. Let's look at 54, answer choice A, 54, is that a multiple of 9? The answer is it is a multiple of 9, 9, 6 are 54, or 6, 9 is a 54. How do we know that 6, 9 is a 54? Because uh, 6, 10 is a 60. If you have 10, 6 is 10, 6 is a 60. Therefore, it stands to reason that if you were to take away 1, 6 from those 10 of those 6s, we will have 54. So that does work, that is possible. Let's look at B. B is 72. 72 is that a multiple of 9? The answer is it is a multiple of 9. 8 times 9 is 72. So that also works. What about C? C says 90. Of course that would work because that's just 10 times. So that works. Must be D. Answer choice must be D. 108. Let's see if that is a multiple of 9 or not. 108. How many 9's does 1 have? 1 has no 9's. 1 has no 9's. That 1 goes and joins to 0 becomes 10. How many 9's does 10 have? 10 has one nines. Once we take away nine from the ten, we have a remainder of one. That one goes and joins the eight and becomes eighteen. And how many nine does eighteen have? Eighteen has two nines. Two nines are eighteen. Two nines are eighteen. It turns out, it turns out that there is also a multiple of nine. Alas! Turns out, it seems that question is not quite as simple as we thought it would be. It's not just a matter of figuring out which of these four numbers is not a multiple of nine, as you can clearly see. They are all multiples of nine, which means somehow we will have to use, we will have to make use of this bit of information. This bit of information, the fact that one person must have worked 24 hours. That is a very crucial bit of information here. We are going to have to make use of that bit of information to figure out which one of these four numbers cannot possibly have been the total number of hours worked by these three people. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. So here's here's what answer choices are. A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. We have 54. Oh, it's right here. All the information is right there. I don't know why I'm rewriting it. So if that's the case, answer choice A is what I'm working with right now. So we have X, Y, and Z. And we know they work in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4. 2 to 3 to 4. If if they did in fact if they did in fact work 54 hours total, 
then which of these three people, one of these three people has to work 24 hours. We have to show somehow that given the fact that they work 54 hours total in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4, it is possible for one person to have worked 24 hours. It is times 6, you see, it is times 6. 2 times 6 is not going to be 24, 3 times 6 is not 24, it is, it is Mr. Z, it is Mr. Z that worked 24 hours. Mr. Mr. Z, who worked, not that, who worked 24 hours. It is Mr. Z. In our situation A, in a scenario A, let's call it scenario A, in scenario A it is us, it's Mr. Z who worked 24 hours. If it turns out that they work total of 72 hours, if it turns out that they work total of 72 hours, then it is times 8. Which of these three numbers times 8 will make 24? The answer is 3. 3 times 8. In the second scenario, it is Mr. Y. It is Mr. Y who worked 24 hours. What about answer choice D? Answer choice D, we're not working with answer choice C right now. Let's leave answer choice C alone. Answer choice D is times 12. Times 12 is 2 times 12. 2 times 12. In the answer choice D, it is Mr. X who worked 24 hours. So here we go. If they work a total of 54 hours, then there is possible for them to have worked 54 hours, given the fact that they work in a ratio of 2 to 3 to 4, if Mr. Z worked 24 hours. Or rather 54 hours, not 24 hours. If they worked a total of 54 hours, then it is possible for Mr. Z, for one person to have worked 24 hours and still the hours be in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4. It is also possible for them to have worked 72 hours, in which case it is Mr. Y who must have worked 24 hours. It is quite, also quite possible that they must have worked a total of 108 hours, which is just twice as much as twice as A, but in that case it is Mr. X who has worked 24 hours. What about answer choice C? Answer choice C is the fact that they, if they work, if they work, that's a big if, if they work a total of 90 hours, then all of these hours, all of these ratios would have to be the multiple of 10. In other words, the only way it would be possible for them to have worked 90 hours and still be in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4 is if X works, if X works 20 hours, Y works 30 hours, and Z works 40 hours, 20 plus 40, 20 plus 30 plus 40 is 90. But as you can see in that scenario, in that scenario, it is impossible for anybody to have worked 24 hours. So given the fact that one person worked 24 hours, it is impossible for them to have worked 90 hours because 90 is a multiple of 10 and 2 to 3 to 4, none of these people would have the opportunity of having worked 24 hours. Answer choice, which of the following cannot be the total number of hours? The answer is C. The answer is C. What we're going to do now is another problem, a little bit more complicated problem. Instead of three, instead of three people, we'll have four people, but the same exact logic, same exact methodology, same exact procedure. You're going to do it yourself. Instead of three people, as I said, we will have four people. Problem number thirty. Problem number thirty. We have not three people, but four people. And because we are in a creative mood, let's call them something else. Let's call them A, B, C, and D. As I told you before, when the creative juices are flowing, well, let's not call them A, B, C, and D because that's going to confuse you with the answer choice A, B, C. Let's call them R, S, T, and U. So we have four people, R, S, T, and U. They put in, we are told, they put in the hours in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. We are told that one person worked a total of 60 hours. So one person worked a total of 60 hours. Of course, we do not know who, obviously. Which of the following, based on the fact that one person worked 60 hours and these four people worked in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, which of the following could not possibly have been the total number of hours worked by, by these four people? And the answer choices are... Four hundred and twenty, 
180, 210, 168, and then finally 140. They're going in a descending order. They're starting from all the way, starting from 420 and going down all the way to 140. One more time: 420, 280, 210, 168, and 140. Do the problem yourself. I'll give you a few seconds, I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video as, as we always do. You're going to do it yourself and after having done that, you're going to compare your work against the work that you and I will do, to, do together in a few seconds time, okay? One more time, we have four people, R, S, T and U. They put in the hours in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. Instead of 2 to 3 to 4, we have 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. One person we have 12 has worked 60 hours. Which of the following could not have been the total number of hours worked by these four people? among these five also choices. Let's see what we can do. So we have A, B, C, D, and E. We have 420. We have 280, we have 210, we have 168, and finally we have 140. First thing we need to do is figure out what these add up to. 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, 2, 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 5 is 10, 10 plus 4 is 14. So it's 14. The total total parts are 14. Are, is there any, any answer choice that is not a multiple of 14? Let's start from the bottom here. We'll start with the smallest one, we'll work up here. So 140 is just 10 times, is 14 times 10. 280 is going to be 20 times, 14 times 20. 14 times 20. And 42, 42 is just 3 times 14. That's going to be 30 times 14. What about 210? How many 14 does 210 have? Well, 210, as you can clearly see, 210 is made up of 140, 140 and 70, 140 and 70, so that's 10, 10 14s and 5 14, that's 15 14s, what about 168, 168 is a tricky one, we're going to have to do it out here, 168 over 14, how many 14 does one have? One has no 14, one has no 14. That one goes and joins the 6, becomes 16. How many 14 does 16 have? 16 has one 14. After we take away 14 from the 16, we have a remainder of 2. That, could, that 2 goes and joins the 8 and becomes 28. And 28 has two 14s. So it is 14 times 12. Let's see what we can do with this. Input. As you can see, all of these are obviously nice multiple of 14 because the problem is not going to be as simple as that. So something is going on, and that something that is going on will has to do with the fact that one person, we are told, must work 60 hours. So let's find out which of these people is going to work 60 hours in each of these scenarios. Let's call them scenario A, B, C, D, and E. We have five scenarios here. Out of those five scenarios, four of those scenarios are possible. One scenario is simply impossible. It simply cannot be that one particular scenario that we're looking for where one person would work 60 hours. One person, nobody will be able to work 60 hours with, with, the, with one, of those, one of these five numbers. So here are the four people, R, S, T, and U. R, S, I'm going to erase this thing so I have more room. T and U. Let's begin, shall we? Let's begin. Is it possible, having, having said that they worked a total of, is it possible for them, in other words, is it possible for them to have worked 420 hours, given the fact that they worked in the ratio of two, to 3, to 4, to 5, and one person to have worked 60 hours. How can we make it times 30? And the ratio has to be, ratio has to be 2, to 3, to 4, to 5. But that's very simple. We want, we want 60, it is just 2 times 30. In answer choice, in answer choice A, answer choice A, it is possible. In that scenario, it is Mr. R who has worked 60 hours. Here we have times 20. Times 20 is this guy, 3 times 20. In answer choice B, it is Mr. S who has worked 60 hours. 
Here we have times 15, this is too simple. Times 15, in that scenario, it is Mr. D, it is Mr. T rather, not D, T as in Tom. It is Mr. T who has worked 60 hours, if it turns out that they worked a total of 210 hours. If they worked a total of 210 hours, then it is Mr. T who must have worked 60 hours. If they worked a total of 280 hours, it is possible for them to have work. It is possible for them to have worked 280 hours, provided that Mr. S works 60 hours. If Mr. S works 60 hours, then it is possible for them to have worked 280 hours because it's a multiple of 20, and 14 times 20 is 280. It is also possible for them to have worked 420 hours, provided that it is Mr. R who works 60 hours. Let's carry on then. Times 12. We want 60. Remember we want 60. 12 times 5 is 60. Oh, there you go, 5, right there. 12 times 5 is going to give us 60. In this case, it's Mr. U. If they work a total of 168 hours, then it must have been Mr. U who has worked, who has worked 60 hours. It is not possible for them to have worked 140 hours. It is impossible for them to have worked 140 hours because in that scenario everybody's hours is going to be multiple of 10 obviously and what will end up is that Mr. R would have worked 20 hours, Mr. S would have worked, Mr. S would have worked 30 hours, Mr. T would have worked 40 hours, Mr. U would have worked 50 hours in a ratio of 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 and nobody has worked 60 hours. Nobody has worked 60 hours and since we are told that one person did indeed work 60 hours. Given that fact, it is impossible for them. It is impossible for them to have worked 140 hours. Answer to our answer is E. Correct answer is E. They could not have possibly worked 140 hours if they were to work in the ratio of two to three to four to five, and if one person is required to have worked 60 hours. Next, in the next video, we'll do our last part, sixth part in the series of six videos on the topic of ratios and proportions. And we'll do two more problems, number 31 and 32. And those two problems are going to have to deal with, uh, well, when we get to it, we'll see, okay? Why not?